at all. But I want to start off by thanking you all very much for coming today. I know it's tough for competing against summertime. I really hate competing against summertime, but uh, you know, we do the best we can. A little bit about me before we jump right in. Uh, I've been in real estate for about 20 years. Before that, I did 38 years in the Air Force. Um, so, bounced around a bit, was in West Germany for six years, was up in Cold Lake, Alberta for 13 years. That's what did. Um, so, I've, I've been up in front of folks a lot. Uh, I'm comfortable up here. I like it. I like meeting folks. And I certainly like sharing what I know and, and, and you know, generating some discussion. That being said, I don't want to talk the whole couple of hours. I don't want to be the only fellow that's up here talking. I, like being, I think you get the most benefit if you can be interactive wherever possible. I came to Keller Williams in 2011, November, when we opened this office. So it was, it was, I was looking forward to opening Barry. I met uh, John Ferber, who was a regional director uh, down in Toronto, attended a few events. And since I joined the company, I've been kind of waiting to get a shooting drop. You know, like, I mean, okay, I like kind of what they think. I like their philosophy, their basic business practices. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. It was a good fit for me. And I'm still, to this day, waiting for the other shoe to drop. You know, like anything else, we, we have our flaws. We have companies or companies. Uh, but I, I've been able, I've been very happy with the amount of training that they offer. You know, you got to remember, Keller Williams was a, a training company thinly disguised as a real estate company for many years. We're going tech now, and we're bringing in command. We're bringing in some, some really good tools from a technology uh, perspective that are helping folks, helping realtors do things easier and faster. But they're tools, right? We're still a belly to belly business. And so Keller Williams likes to share their, their, their whatever working for people. We don't, we don't like to hide in the heart. We kind of like to share and move around. So you will hear um, some Keller Williams isms throughout the course of today. And if you don't know what it is, just stop me just again. I'm not getting that, that acronym. We're kind of back and happy, but most places there. But uh, sometimes I'll say it unconsciously. If I'm going too fast, guys, please feel free to slow me down. You know, if I because I tend to get excited and I might talk a little fast. If you miss something, that's great. Um, I'll try and watch for for signs that you're that you're starting to you know those off or fall asleep, and we'll, we'll move things up and we'll get things uh, we'll get things going. If you need a washer blade, great. Uh, does everyone here know where they are? Washers are right around the corner, just out that door. Okay, so let's the uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So what are we going to cover today? Basically, it's what's up there. Quick introduction. Who are METs? What is networking? Um, working with METs. Referrals to your network. Referrals are a big part of our business. I don't think everyone takes advantage of them the way we can. But we can we can, we can facilitate a move anywhere across the country. You don't have to be there to do it. If we know someone that's moving from Orlando to California, we can be part of that. The beauty is they'll send us a check. That's a beautiful, that's a beautiful thing. Um, then final thoughts, we'll tie it all together, and then we'll get some ahas from you, and we'll, we'll send you on your way. Okay, next slide, please. So I think some of you have been here before, you know kind of the ground rules. Um, timing is, of course, good. If I break it down to do some discussion, I think we have enough folks here today, we can actually do that, so we'll probably uh, role play a bit and do some exercises just to get you into it a bit. Because contrary to popular beliefs, you, you learn more by doing actually than just by listening and by absorbing, right? I think I think the the, the advantage is to role play and, and to participate and you'll get more out of it. And that's my hope here is you guys you know, take away something today. One nugget or two nuggets is time well said. Um yeah, breaks we're, um maybe I'll put on military hands at least we won't take any breaks today. We're gonna go right till one o'clock and we're just gonna we're just gonna bear down and keep going. Maybe we'll go that route. And then have fun that bottom part of there. It's uh, it's not only me up here that's having fun. It's you guys too. And I guarantee I'll pick up something today. I pick up I like to pick up something whenever I can when I teach. That's the selfish day again. I like that. So so I like to do that. Okay, next slide, please. So um, I think I had a smattering of knowledge about where people are in the group in terms of real estate uh, and what they're doing business wise. Who, who wants to share what they're doing today that's working for, in terms of lead generation? Anybody doing anything? Is, is like, Brad, what, uh, door knock. Your door knocking, okay, and how are you find that working? Um, uh, he's good. Yeah. 
Oh, there you go. So you're getting a lead. So are you finding you're in the same area? Are you finding an area? Are you kind of just actually I'm um, I work in farm in this area. Okay. That's my uh, plan. Okay. That's right. Yeah, you'll start to know when people start to recognize you and know who you are, and and I mean, then you know that your farm is becoming successful, right? It doesn't happen overnight all the time. It doesn't happen. When you, um, it happens after work sometimes. After after consistently being there, sometimes you know people aren't receptive as well at first, but they they warm up. They warm up when they see you. Anyone else doing anything that's working in terms of lead gen, Brennan? Well, I don't know whether it's working yet. Okay. I'm just I just sort of started this uh, this past week with uh, along along with what this gentleman was saying, doing the uh, door knocking, which you, you, I was talking to you about last week. I right. started doing it. But I've, on top of that, what I'm doing is I've, I'm organizing a neighborhood food drive for the for the Barry Food Bank, and I'm going around to tell my neighbors and knocking on doors and handing out these these little flyers here just to let them know that this is what I'm doing, trying to. Try to you know give back a little bit at the same time as you know getting contact names and numbers of people that I maybe haven't met before and, and they they are within my farming area and so I've already I've started it I still got a lot of doors to knock on but uh, but it's it's I'm starting to already um, add to my database. Well, I love it. I love it, and it's a pay it forward attitude, and I think it's those types of things are contagious, right? And I, I don't know about anyone else, but I think the world needs a whole bunch more of that kind of stuff. You know, doing something that's positive instead of Taking away what's wrong with, with, with the things, and I think we need to focus more on what's right. And that's, and that's an awesome idea to associate you as the food guy, and the food guy will eventually morph into the realtor guy. Great, thank you for sharing that. Anyone else doing something? Is anyone working homes regularly? I say. Okay, and, and that's that's fair. I mean, when I first started the business, that phone weighed three hundred and fifty pounds. You can't lift up that. You can't start a You can't get into a habit of doing that. But some, regardless of what you're doing, whether it's door knocking, whether it's commercial sphere, whether it's a residential sphere, sphere, you want to be tracking what you're doing, right? Otherwise, you won't know if it's working or not. If you're not, if you're not looking at your numbers and and and, and keeping keeping score, then you know you're not in the game. Every game has a score, even darts. You know, you. you know, it's a game. The soccer sport this morning, the winner the one, right? Do everyone know that? Spoiler alert that the, uh, the women beat the Ireland two to one in the square. So, but you have to know the score of where you're at. And if you don't know where you're at, then you don't know what's working and what's not working. So when you're when you're out there doing any type of lead gen whatsoever, keep score guys. You know, whether now we talk about shift. There's another book here, and I won't go too much on the book. But Gary Keller has a book called Shift. The market's never always in a seller's market, regardless of what the last 10 years have been. The market actually shifts right from a buyer's market to a seller's market. Doesn't stay in balance the market very long. Usually it's just a quick slide through. But we're starting to see things shift a bit now. Those interest rates keep pushing upwards. It's getting quiet out there. I mean, for those of you that are doing your lead gen, you're going to find a difference, a difference in the tonality. Some folks are they're getting worried about interest rates if their mortgage is renewing. Some folks are, 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 you know, not wanting to buy right now. They're just saying, I'll wait till, wait till the rates come back down. So regardless of whether you're working with buyers or sellers, there's a shift going on. So for lead gen, normally, in a normal world, if we have a normal kind of balanced market, we're looking at adding about 20 people a week to our database. Okay, that's on a normal, if you want to grow your business and you want to start, because your, your business is your database. And you may have heard it referred to as a data bank before, right? So you're taking people, today what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about taking people from out there in the world or in a phone book or in, you know, wherever you're getting them from in your neighborhood, talking about taking them, capturing them as a lead, and then setting systems and plans to turn them, to bring them into your met, to bring them into your database to, to, to do business with you, right? And here's why. We know that for every 12 people we have in our database, we're going to get two deals a year out of them. Now, let me rephrase that. For every two people that we're in regular, not for every 12 people that we're in regular contact with in our database, 
we're going to get two deals from, or they will be doing two deals. Now, there's a big difference between having a database and not using it, and not not even touching people, and not not communicating with it, and not communicating with all the people in it, than just having it there. Would, would everyone agree with that? Okay. Good. Okay. So. If you take a few minutes, if you're just starting out in the business and you haven't been doing a lot of lead gen yet, take a couple of seconds and just think about what you're going to do after today. If you want to keep doing what you're doing, that's great. How am I going to track what I'm doing a bit better? If you haven't thought of doing anything yet, there's different phone dialers that work out there. Talk to your broker record and get your do not call list and make sure you're on site because you don't want to start out by calling someone that you shouldn't. We had someone in our office here call a broker of record up. We need to call a do not call list. That's a bad day. That was a bad day for, for, for that person. Anyways, if you could do it with a grain of salt because it, because you know, it, was, it was definitely it was early on in the day. But if you're doing the calls and you're going to cold call, you'll track your calls. You know, I was saying earlier 20 contacts a week is normal in a balanced market. Gary says, and the shift book says, when we're in a shifted market, we got to double down. That means you've got to add 40 names a day to your database. Not for 40 days, sorry, 40 names a week, right? Now that's, that sounds like a lot, but door knocking sounds like a lot. If you say you want to do 300 doors, that sounds like a lot, doesn't it? But if you only say, well, we can do five doors, five doors doesn't sound so much, do five. If you can only make five phone calls, if you get 40, 40 sounds like a lot, say, I'm going to get five. You got to start somewhere. And if you're tracking where you're going, you want to improve that and add it incrementally. And that leads to my third book out here, which is Atomic Habits. Has anyone read this one yet? This is kind of good too. And this kind of just says that change happens incrementally. Very small changes will lead to big differences. So we people constantly overestimate what we can do in a year, and we underestimate what we can do in five years. And that's human nature. Right? Okay, next slide, please, Joby. Okay, so the pillars, if, uh, if you're just starting out and you're just here, this will get you from getting into the business to getting to where you want to be. And what drives you to where you want to be is, is having a big why. It's why you get up every morning. It's why we're in business. It's why we're in sales, why we're in real estate, right? We should, we should, have, we should be very strongly aware of that. And right now we're going to do, we're talking about working with Mets and working with people that we know, and that's part of the pillars that hold it all up that will get us to where we want to go. Thank you. Next slide, please. Um, so Mets, so Mets, we know, we know the difference between a Met and an unmet, right? A Met, who, who can tell me what a Met is? Just really briefly. Influences, sir. Influences, influences. How do you mean? Right? I mean, what's a met? What's the definition of a met? Isn't it just somebody that you've met? Yeah. So, like, it's from a in the grocery store in the neighborhood or whatever. Sort of. Okay. So, if you want someone in the grocery store and you talk to them one time, would you consider that person to be a met? If it's someone you can work with, like a mortgage broker. Okay, well, how would you know how to work with them? How would you know how to get a hold of them in paper? Well, you'd have to exchange information. Okay, now if more of Brian shaking his head, no. I was just going to say people that are in your sphere of influence. Okay, they could be in your sphere. So they get into your sphere of how? By you meeting them, right? You're doing something with them, and then also you capture their information, right? So it's really a met person is someone that you've had a two way dialogue with. And then you've got an email or a phone number or an address or some means of contacting them again, they become a man. Now, I can't tell you the number of open houses about SAC where I picked up people and then they've kind of fallen off the table because I didn't do anything with it. I just picked it up. I had a nice name. I had a contact. We had a conversation for maybe five minutes. They were in the place. And then off the table they went, and away they went, and I find it, I find it in my notes about a year later. I'm going, oh, this isn't good. <laughs> this isn't good because why? Because they're gone, right? So you're met. Anyone that you can consider met is someone that you can that you can touch and that you can talk to. Okay. 
There are also those people that you've known all your life and in your spirit right There are also those people, those people are also considered men. Right? You got to update your database and feed it and get them into you, get them into a, some sort of a regular touch program. We're going to talk about a couple of different programs here this morning as well. Okay, next slide, please, Julie. So you've got four different, really, levels of mets. You've got your network mets, the people that you just kind of know randomly, maybe a hockey dad, your coach, coach dad mets. You've got your allied resources. Those are folks that are going to refer and do business with you that you've done business with in the past. They're going to lead to a certain amount of a certain amount of deals. Also, your advocates. Those are people that are talking about you when you're not there in front of them. Right? Those are people where you're in the top of their mind and you know that they're going to they're going to they're going to be referring you and talking about you. And then your core advocates. These are people that you deal with regularly that do multiple deals with you a year or result in you getting multiple referrals in one year. Now, do you think you treat all these folks the same? In terms of touching them and reaching out to them? Probably not. I see April shaking her head. Probably not, right? We 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 wanna we wanna touch all of them, but we have to treat them kind of differently. Right? We want to treat those, we want to make sure that we get those core advocates. We want to we want them to know clearly how to deal with us and how to how to send clients our way. Because they're gonna they're gonna be our they're gonna be our bread and butter. I mentioned last week a couple of times the fortune is in the follow-up, right? If you if you're not following up and telling people, then you're probably not gonna um, be as successful as you could be. Next slide, please. Um, so I don't think we're going to do this exercise. This um, this this just is just thinking about your database and how you're adding names to it. I mean, we talked a bit about it. I'm I'm just wondering if if no one's really building this. Are people working on it? Have, have you been working on it? I find there's so many different databases over and above just command. You know, then you've got Realm, then you've got your email list. Like, there's so many. So, you know, how are people keeping their data list consistent? Are you just cross uploading into different platforms? It's a great question. Because I don't know if I'm the only one that's struggling with different. It's a great question. I'm not, I'm not the only one, right? No. I just feel like it's so much. And every platform has a benefit for uploading your contacts. So you kind of want them in all. Wow. Yeah, that can get overwhelming, can't it? I've heard I've heard some folks even that look they, they started out using Outlook because that was their their main database. Kirby Chan who comes here and does talks, he has what Facebook. Mm -hmm. He has all his Facebook maxed out and that's his database. Great question. What what are other folks doing that to kind of to kind of keep things organized? Right. Okay. Just me and the address and take some notes. And sometimes I also have more book as well. So, ah, yeah. so the you can't always get out into the tests a change. Okay. I can tell you how Gary Kelly started. He started with, with the three by five cards, mm -hmm. right? He would meet someone and put their name and address in it, and he would then if he talked to them one day, he would then move it to the next time he had to talk to them. And we'll talk a bit more about that later about how the system organized. But he worked that's when he started his business up. That fellow he had, he had a rescue box and he had three by fives. For all of that, yeah. That's all he had. Yeah, yeah. So I mean you can make it as simple as you want it. You can make it as complicated as you want it. Top producer was a big popular database that I've seen heard for a long, long time. Cost money. Cost you money, you have to buy it, then you have to buy a yearly subscription to it to keep it active. It had a lot of bells and whistles on it. But I think the answer, the real best answer is, is that choose whatever database you're going to use. Whatever, whether it's paper, whether you're comfortable writing something down on paper, whether it's command or whether it's top producer, or whether it's, you know, anything, anything that you're out with even, right? Anything that you're using regularly and you're comfortable with will be fine. Start with that one. And then if you need to import data or export data, you know, some of them are, are more user friendly than others. Mm -hmm. So if you want, I don't know what realm, if you can pull it up in your database, you know, if you save it as a yeah, Excel or something like that, spreadsheet, you can yeah, pull it in and move. Yeah. So, so but, but 
whatever you find, find something comfortable, and then use the one you're going to use. You know, so I like hard copy too. I mean, I like that because you can make notes on it, you can scratch it, and you can file it and have it in your hand. So, and the power goes out of your battery, you don't have to worry about it in that case. Right? But I'm old school. What about Alex? What are you doing for your database? What are you, uh, what are you tracking your leads with? I'm just uh, using command and anything else that I'm just sorry, anything you can't, that I think. You have to come off mute or. Oh, sorry. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. I'm, uh, I'm just using command and, and anything that I get off of command, I'm just putting in manually into command. I know there was, um, there was a great app. Um, I think it was ZingZap or Zing, Zingu or something where there's where it will do that for you once you've set it up um nathan graham from our uh, from our office taught a class on it um with with the free version you can connect to uh two apps it works with any app really um i just i haven't had a reason to need to use it yet. So I'm only using the one database. Anything else I'm just cross putting in manually into uh, command. There's no doubt in my mind that, that there's an app out there that'll take it from, from audio to put it right into text. I mean, if you use AI or something, I'm sure you can, you know, you set up 705, you know, 726, 7500, and it goes into the database and Mr. Al Smith, away it goes and it files and organizes. I mean, I'm sure there's an app out there that does that. I haven't heard of that one though, Zing Zang. Has anyone else heard of that one? No. Interesting. There's probably something else out there, isn't there? Sorry, uh, sorry. It's uh, Zapier. 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 Zap. I E R. Zap. Maybe I've heard of Zapier. Okay. It's integrated with the different application. Okay. So we browse the data. Okay. Nice. Nice. It's only you know I mean, you're only limited by your imagination as to what you want to use or what you can what you can do. Okay, so are you tracking how many you're adding? I don't need specifics here. Are you are you are you right? Are you are you keeping are you keeping score? Tyra says she's not. Yeah. So it's a number they often reference two hundred. Yeah, is uh, sort of a magic number to try to hit. So that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So, so that'll come up a little bit further on, David. Can you park that? I mean, with your permission, can you just put that off to the side? That number will come up, and the numbers that you need in your database will drive the business that you want to get, right? I mean, you can, I think uh, Bruce Hardy, who's an uh, uh, agent out of the West Coast, he has a database of 3,700 people, and he manages that, and he talks to that, and that may come up throughout today as well. Um, but if, if it's okay with me, we'll just park that for now and then we'll, we'll, we'll pick up on that later. Okay. The, the point, I guess, is, is that regardless of how many you're doing, you want to strive towards that 20 a week, keep growing your database, keep, keep touching those people that are entered into it, and your business is going to grow effectively. Next slide, please, Jovan. All right. So, so. So yeah, we might as well jump right into like a closed sale goal now. And this is this is kind of when you think about your business and where you want to take it, you think about how many deals do I want to do, right? Multiply by six, which is a 12 to two ratio, and then the contacts in your database. So so why don't you take a second there and just, just think about this? Just think about your business and where you want it to be. You want to be that 20 deal guy I talked about earlier, you want to be that 500 deal guy. They're both good, there's no right or wrong answer. It's wherever you want to take it. And then to determine how big your database should be, you'll 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 come up with your number here. And I gotta say, guys, we talk about numbers and we talk about in our you'll see in the in the uh, in the write-up today, you'll see a lot about the National Association of Rivers in the States. Canada mirrors that very closely, right? And a lot of statistics, a lot of a, a lot of things we find. So so don't 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 get put off by the fact that it's it's out of the US and it doesn't apply to us. We trend and we follow the US a lot. And in fact, in some circumstances, in some ways, we're almost a 51st state. We go to jail for saying that in the previous life. But, but I mean, it's true, right? It's true. Economically, 
geographically, most of our population is within 100 miles of the U.S. border. So, so just we keep that in mind. So, if you see stats and you see anything related to NAR, it's it applies to Korea as well. Very, very similar for the most part. Not just Toronto and Halifax and Vancouver, right? Or Montreal. It's it's, it's generally, generally speaking, it's we're just sitting. So, what kind of numbers are we coming up with? Anybody want to share? Anybody want to share what their goals are? My calculator because my brain, my brain is uh, good, but it's not great. Well, I'm just out of the way. So, you said 10? So, it's yes. a fifteen contacts. Right. So, if you wanted to do 10, multiply by 6, that comes up with 60 contacts in your database, right? Okay. In your med. Right? Because you'll have on meds as well. Like, if you're farming an area and you're sending out mailers, those will be people you haven't talked with yet. That's it's not considered a med yet. That's still considered an unmet. So at least ten, and, and, the, and the ratios are much different if you wanted to do restrictions with unmets. If we back up a little bit, we know it's twelve to two for for met database. If if it's not in your met, and the numbers are kind of jump there, I with me. I think it's 50, 50 to one. You need fifty in your unmets for one transaction, right? But so we'll. That'll come up later. Anyone else have any numbers or that you're willing to share? You don't have to, you know, like I said, you don't want to, you don't have to. But if you have a number that you're working on, and David, I, I will keep that 200 up there. We can talk about that. Seem, it seemed low though, right? Like a low number. If I do have 60 contacts, through Mars, is that like nurturing them and constant contact? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's not just just like happy birthday or, or just right. the contact. Just some of them that. It's people that you're talking to regularly. Okay. And again, we're going to talk about that as we move forward a bit, right? Uh, next slide, please, Joby. Um. So yeah, so it boils backwards, right? When you go ahead. I just wonder, so as a buyer, when right. I'm getting um, from the agent that I would have used the homes that are for sale that, that are within my parameters, is that falling into what you're talking about at the map? Absolutely. When I talk about ends and deals and we talk about what our goal is for the year, it considers both buyers and sellers. So if you got if you're working with buyers, can I understand your question? Sure. Well, I guess I'm just trying when you're like if if Say my number is 300. Oh, right. right. 300 people, that would be too many to probably actually keep on top of. But are you to, is that including like you're just like those generated emails that are from, you know, like every listing that's within this region, within this price range that I get? Is, is that part of the communication that you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and 300 isn't necessarily too many to manage. It would be if I had to call like, if I had to have regular conversations with 300 people, that would be too hard. So let's try it. Let's try it. How many do you think you'd be doing one day? 10 or 20? How many conversations would you have with somebody? I don't think day? I could do 10 or 20 if I was like when you're actively, like if I'm, if I'm dropping off water samples and I'm, I'm, I'm going to the township office or I'm like, well, I think once you start. Into, and I, I'm brand new, so I don't know, I don't know what new. you guys are talking about. I'm like okay. literally a day in. Awesome. Awesome. But, um, I think two, yeah, yeah, it might be two days in. But like when I'm when I see uh what Scott would do for me and all the running around he would do, there's no way he could keep in touch with three hundred people. Sometimes I feel like I'm bugging so, him and I'm part of his team. I think thank you. I, I think that makes I, sense. I thought what you're saying now. So you're talking about working with 300 buyers, like like active buyers right now. Right. So yeah, no, I can do that. I don't think anyone in the room can do that. I mean, by working with buyers is a lot more intense than working with sellers. So what we're talking about is communicating, and then we grade. We're going to grade our sellers. Eventually, we're going to get to our database, and we're going to we're going to grade them from A to C or from one to three, however you want to do it. We're going to grade them for those that are considering buying in the next week. To be active, they would be our A sellers and buyers, right? Those would be our people who want to really be in touch with almost daily. And then right down to the people that are thinking about it, they're going to be someday buyers or sellers. 
those people would be seized or freeze and we would rate them much lower. We would still touch them and stay in contact with them though. Because in my experience, and in most, most rule of thumb is this, if someone says they want to buy or sell in six months, you want to be talking to them in three months. If they say a year, you want to be six months. You want to be, you want to be half, as, half as, as much as they say, because life changes. Someone that says they're not going to sell, they're going to carry me out of here in a fine box, I talk to them anyways until they tell me to go away, or until I see the fine box going down, down the walkway. <laughs> so, um, back to your point though, it's, we're talking about a database that we're contacting and touching people with versus actual clients that we're working with. Yeah, you'd be hard pressed to work with three or four buyers at the same time. I mean, two, two can get like this. If you're scheduling showings and you're driving them all around. Now I can work with two listings, no problem. Especially now with broker day where people are booking their own showings and you know they're doing everything by themselves. The COVID requirements should be off a bit. There's still brokerages out there that have it, right? Follow the COVID code protocol when you're booking showings. You know, which is kind of weird because it hasn't been a thing for, for about four or five months now anyway. Great question, Owen, and thank you for slowing me down a bit. I'm happy to I'm happy to kind of gear it to everyone. Okay. Next slide, please, Joby. Okay, next one again. We're, we're kind of hitting on it. We're we're met working, we're working that met database. So so the myth is, is that if you build they will come, right? That's the field of dreams. I mean everyone thinks it's a great movie. You like Kevin Costner, you know, anyways. Um, but that's not true. If you build it and have it sitting there, no one's gonna do anything about it. All businesses have to have customers driven to them. They have to they, you have to be in constant contact. We're in two businesses, let's face it. Any realtor sitting in the room here, we're in we're in the real estate business and we're also in the lead generation business, right? We have to generate contact, generate those leads, and then contact them on a regular basis. Right? Thank you. Next slide, please. All right, so this first hard I mentioned his name a bit earlier. He was in Australia, he landed in Seattle, he didn't know hardly anyone. He started talking to people, meeting them, put them on a, what we call an eight by eight touch and then a 33 touch. So we're going to talk about that a little bit, a little bit better, a little bit more to go along. It's in your book. Let's go with the eight by eight. Okay, next slide, please, Joey. Um, okay, we touched on this a bit, right? The importance of contacting folks in your database and maintaining a relationship with them is because the more they get to know you, the more top of mind that you are in their in their brain. So when real estate comes up, like I mean. For most people, they can keep two or maybe three names in their head of dentists, plumbers, real estate agents, lawyers, whatever, whatever trade you want to say, painters. I mean, you can't think of more than two or three unless you're in it all the time and you're aware of it. So the idea then is to fight for that for that space. And the way we fight for that space in people's heads is to constantly contact them and remind them that we're in the business and, and we want to do that. And we want to do that without upsetting them and making them go somewhere else, right? Or telling us to shut up or, or unsubscribing from our from our touches, right? So we'll talk about how we do that a bit moving on. So those people, I mean, wherever we can, we like to work with people that we like, and people that are the same as us. And that's kind of the way human nature is they gravitate towards folks that are similar to yourselves. Right? They're going to be, in, if you look at your five friends, you're going to find them. They're very close in terms of income earned, very close in terms of habits and things, likes and dislikes and things, and that's human nature. We gravitate towards it. So that's why we want to be able to touch those people in the database on a, on a, on a meaningful way, in a meaningful way, and, and get, it, get them into our circle or become part of their circle. Next slide, please. There's so much going on in this world that folks, folks, it's hard to get in there and stay in that in that top of the mind. So the more we can do that, the better we can be that top of mind. Because we want to be that person, right? For our database, whether it's 300 or whether it's 30 or 60, we want to make sure that, that if, if real estate comes up with those folks, that they think of us, that they think of us first, right? Or maybe second. So when they have two names out, and that's going to be mixed in with everything else that's going on in their lives. Heaven knows we're busy. We got a lot of stuff to do with the tires are breaking down. We don't like this warm out, the weather's out. 
there's 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 all kinds of things that are competing for attention in our brain. So it's not who you know, it's who knows you. Okay, next slide, please. Yeah, I think we talked about this pretty good. We pretty much hammered this one. Thanks, Joby. Next slide, please. So cyclical business of our business, it's, it's not uncommon to have a roller coaster effect. Never mind seasonality, where we have a busy spring market and it things taper off, and then a busy fall market and things taper off. But most realtors find that when they start to get busy, their lead generation drops off. And when it drops off, they'll take care of the business that they had on the table, and then all of a sudden, it's quiet. And if, you know, I'm going to a market leader. I would have been a market leader for years and years ago. And he said, if you want to get busy in real estate, you want to have a successful career, go buy a Cadillac. Go buy a boat. Go buy something where you have a car payment and you need a paycheck to pay for that, to pay for that toy. He said, you'll get busy. He said, you'll get busy and stay busy. But the idea here is that we have to lead gen. We have to continue to lead gen while we're busy. So the rule of thumb in our red book here in the MREA is three hours a day, five days a week of lead generation. Now, five days a week is a bit much. And even some successful realtors take a day off. They take the day off to make sure that they're following up with those people that they connected with from Monday to Thursday, right? But if you really, really want to be successful and you're focused and you're doing three hours of lead gen a day, five days a week, you're going to, you're going to be successful. You're going to get those leads. Or else we're going to be out of business if you, you know if you don't you don't get there. Um, so what you want to do is level out that line instead of getting busy, 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 and then dropping off, and then busy, 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 and dropping off. If you keep the lead gen going, then it, your business will level out again at a level that you're comfortable with. Okay, next slide, please, Joey. Okay. So prospecting and marketing, we talked about that a little bit last week, and I know it was mentioned previously. There's a difference between the two. Anyone want to share the difference? Brian, you don't have to right now because I know Brian's got a marketing background. What's the difference between prospecting and marketing? Mike, do you know? I haven't thought about it. I'm guessing that prospecting is sort of um, – maybe putting together more of an idea of who you're going to focus your marketing on like markets marketing is more of a focused approach i'm not really sure okay you're okay fair enough april marketing is more hands-off i think it's more automated so you're not can physically face-to-face -to -face or yeah okay can we anyone else Allison? yeah the prospecting is yeah like being more proactive and going to that source, whether it's door knocking, making the cold calls, if you're kind of finding them, okay. or marketing, you kind of put it out there and then hope they respond. Like, oh, okay. want that active active and pass I'm getting active and passive there a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Brian, would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. So marketing and then and then let's try a bit of expense to each one. If you were if you were gonna say which one's more expensive typically, more like marketing right but maybe you're paying for ads to go out you're paying for, for for facebook ads you're paying for whatever newspaper you can still do that by the way there's a few realtors in the area they still have a whole day of paying in the uh in very events even not in the area true enough yeah frank leo's kind of yeah, crazy frank leo yeah, 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 yeah so he's got he's got deeper pockets than Ben. You'll never see my face on the on 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 newspaper anymore. I don't think I'm a full page anyway. Back in the day, a full page was like eight hundred bucks for the very event. Right? eight hundred bucks was a lot of money for me. It was like three car payments. Okay, so so there is a difference between marketing and prospecting. And in order to have a successful business, especially when you're starting out, you haven't got a lot of deep pockets. Like Frank Leo, you want to be prospecting based, marketing enhanced, right? So, uh, and I, Brian, I remember this from last week. Do we play red light, green light with your money? Right? If you want to, if you don't have much money coming in, then you want to put a red, you better be earning more than your return when you pay out, more than a reasonable return. Now, a reasonable return to some folks is 5%, 10%. Not to Gary, he says it's not 15 or 20%, it's not worth doing. I mean, you should be getting that your money working for you. So, if you make sure if you're spending it, in marketing that you're getting it back. 
one of the first things we do is buy business cards. Any real estate agent, right? They're pretty cheap. They're pretty effective. You can get what a thousand of them for 60 bucks. Shop around a bit. So that's you're gonna use them to prospect, but they really their marketing, right? It's kind of a it's kind of a, a bit of both. Okay, next slide, please. So here's where we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes of what we're talking about today. An eight by eight touch for your Mets, a system for, for dealing with people that you meet and you get their information from. We want to do, we want to touch them eight times in eight weeks. So once you meet someone, they're gonna say, Yeah, I'll take your card, or yeah, I'll give you my information. Then we have to go in there and we have to hammer that home. And we do it with eight touches. Now I should tell you that the eight touches in eight weeks is your first um, process to, to get them connected with you, right? Then you'll put them on a, on a drip campaign or then you'll find out where to touch them. Depending on their urgency, that eight touches might be in the first four or five days. If, they, if they're hot, like a kid, they sold their house and, they, and they're looking to buy really closely, you're not going to wait. You're not going to just touch them once a week for eight weeks. You're going to be all over them, like white on ice. You know, you're going to be you're going to be talking to them, building that relationship really quickly, and, and getting to know what their wants and needs are fast. But for most people that are just kind of looking around, that are just kind of starting out in their journey, once a week for eight weeks straight will get them into your into your fold. Should get them in, or they might decide that you know what, this isn't a good fit, and then they unsubscribe from you or turn you off. Either way, it's good, right? Because we only have about 11 billion people on the planet. We gotta work through them fast. So if we find out that it's not gonna be a good fit, don't you want to know quick? Like, like why would you why would you hang around with someone for a long time, put all your time and energy into them only to have them go and deal with their brother or brother-in-law anyways? You want to find out it's not a good fit early on and knock it off, right? So we're gonna talk about different ways we can do those eight touches too. Go ahead. This is a potential client, right? Of course. Yeah, they're in your mind. So if I'm meeting someone a uh, mortgage lender or a uh, law office, a writer, won't be part of this eight by eight. Or what do you think? What do you guys think about that? Raj, what if what if we're talking about about um, like a mortgage broker, or we're talking about uh, a painter or home inspector? Would you touch them the same way? Would you like say chicken and then yeah? So I think the eight weeks will be fine depending on, on your needs, right? I will say this. I said I have a toolbox full of people that I know of contacts that I've built up over the past 20 years, right? I, I have a contact that I know you and I know the contact. I know it might not be a good fit. I'd like to have another contact to be able to connect you guys with. Right? So we're focusing mainly just on Mets and not clients, but they're potential clients. Right. So even if we're and it's reciprocal, right? If we're talking about growing our growing our sphere and growing our our, our preferred vendors or people that we use all the time, we're gonna wanna we're gonna wanna treat them the same as we want to as same as we would a met person. We want to see if that if relationship is worth developing further. And we do that by eight touches. So I would do it and it would depend on your like if I had a real need for mortgage brokers and I don't know about anyone else in the room, but there's a lot of mortgage brokers out there, right? There, there's quite a few out there, and they're pretty aggressive in trying to trying to get my referrals. I would want to know it's a reciprocal arrangement. So if I'm going to ask them for something, and I'm going to ask them to work with someone, I want to give them something too. So I want to send clients their way, maybe once we build that relationship up, right? But it's a great question. I mean, I would I would treat them just like my just like someone I meet. Because if you never have enough home inspectors, have an old one, and we went for a couple of years without using any of them, right? So they started going down the business, going back to what they did before. Now the market shifts a bit. Home inspections and financing clauses are back on the table. Now you're scrambling around looking for a home inspector because they haven't had any work for two years, right? That's that's the way the things shift, and so it's always good to have more than one, and it's always good to be able to mix and match wherever you can, right? Just because. Uh, let's face it, you don't want to refer someone to a mortgage broker you know is going to clash with them. You know, if they're too aggressive personalities, it could be a, could be a firestorm in there real quick. 
Okay, um, and again, we're driving here, we're driving appointments, right? Our network, we're driving our, our database is designed totally to get to the next level, which is when you decide to buy yourself, we want to be sitting down with them. We may not get them, guys, you know, it speaks to a conversion rate. We may not be able to do business with everyone that's in our database and our contact base, and you should know that. And you should follow that by tracking your numbers. You should know how many I need to talk to. How many appointments do I have to go on before I get a buyer or a seller signed up? Right? Because it may not be 100%. On average, if you're doing 75%, you're doing good. Three out of every four, that's not too bad. You know, I mean, we're going to get used to the idea that it's not going to be a good fit with everyone. So, but you're not going to get in if you don't get those appointments. And if you don't have a database that you're talking to regularly, you're not going to get the appointments. That's uh, something else we should be tracking, right, Alex? Is number of appointments we go on a week. Depending on where your goal is at, to stay in the business, you need to be doing three appointments a week. If your conversion rate is only 25 to 50 percent, because that way you're doing one, you're getting one person signed up that's thinking about buying or selling, right? That'll keep you in business. Okay, next slide, please. Oh, I didn't talk about the 33 touch there. That's fine. The eight by eight is to cement the relationship after you meet them with someone new. That's you do an eight by eight right away. Okay, and we're going to talk about what those eight by eights are. The 33 touch is how you keep them and get them warm and fuzzy with you, right? Because you want your clients to be warm and fuzzy. You want your contact, you want your contact database to be to be comfortable with you and top of mind. Now we say 33 touch. That's one of those things that's kind of shifted a bit to the left over the past 20 years. Because of social media, because of the TikTok, because of all the different avenues and different ways people have, I think that 33 touch is closer to 50 touches here now. And it sounds phenomenal, right? That's almost once a week you're reaching out to your clients. And again, depending on who they are, if they're core advocates, you may be taking them out to dinner once a month, right? If, if they're leaving you two or three deals a quarter, you want to make sure that you, you nurture that relationship and you have a good close relationship with them. You want to make sure you know their kids' birthdays, their dogs' names, the age of their fish, right? You want to you want to be involved with them as much as possible. So to do that, you're going to be scheduling appointments and you're going to be blocking off time to do that with them. Someone that's just thinking about buying or selling a house in the next six months, all of a sudden you can touch them in different ways. You still want their birthdays. You still want to know their family, you still want to know what's going on in their world, but you don't need to be right in their face like you do with those core advocates. So, um, yeah, let's skip this one, please, Joby. Okay, we talked about this as well. Next slide, please. Okay, this will be, you'll find in your, in your book, I think. Uh, I don't have a page number. 23 is jumping out to mine, but I don't know what it is. Can anyone tell me what title uh, page it's on? So I guess we're talking and not using this. 23. Is it 23? Yeah. Where did that come from? Don't ask me. I have to write this morning, but I it's on page 23. Okay. So this is what you want to do um, for your 8 by 8s now it's important. Go ahead, David. How do you get the manual? That makes you manual, right? Well, do you have a speed study guide? Do you need to get a study guide? No. It was the last one they joined. So oh, okay. We'll um, get them then my apologies. Then um, maybe you can buddy up and share with someone who has it. Did you have it there, Brian? Yeah, I got it. Okay, well, yeah. so if you don't mind. Oh, yeah, email. Perfect. Yeah. So, there's people that 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 scoff at, at, at any idea that's out there. There's people that jump right on board behind any idea that's out there. Gary said a lot of people with his eight by eight plan. They said it's not working. They said Gary, I tried your eight by eight plan. It doesn't work. He said, well, he said, tell me a bit more about that. What were you doing with that? Well, he said, I sent them an email. He said, I sent them a newsletter. Then I emailed them again. He said, I did this for eight weeks. He said, wait a minute, did you phone them and actually talk to them? Uh, no, I didn't do that. Oh, you didn't do that, so you're not following the eight by eight. You have to throw a mix in, right? It has to be the eight by eight. Your your the 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 types of touches that you do in that first eight weeks are systematic and they're and they're thereby designed. 
that touches an important part of or drop by face to face. Have something with you. Don't just drop by and say, hi, remember me on the guy's door up here a week ago. Yeah. Have something of value to them. Now, what would something of value be? What do you think might be a value? A market report might be good. Yeah, it's a hey, look at the million paper sold around the corner. You want to know what they got for it? Now, can we tell them that legally? No. Sometimes you have to take your legal hat off and put it on the side oh, and say, because everyone else is doing it. Right? <laughs> everyone else is doing it. Well, I mean, you've got to be in the game, or else we're not in the game. They're going to go somewhere to give them that information. I'm going to strike that from <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. This isn't being recorded, right? So we're fine. So, so. The, the point is, if we're not following this exactly, then what system are we following to, to get better, become more successful? You have to follow the system. So it might mean an email after you meet them, right? Or a handwritten mail that off after you meet them. Then a phone call has to be done. The phone call has to be done. It's important. Or the drop by. So you're seeing them face to face, you're talking to them, you're getting them in a different way. Do you think a text message is the same thing as an as a, as a email? Would you say? Would you say it's the same thing? Like, like, yeah. Same sort of touch. April, thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is kind of the same thing, right? Email, text. I mean, it's the same medium, but it's much different than a drop by. A drop by with uh, maybe it's I don't know. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's in the fall and you get a pumpkin pie, and you know that your client likes pumpkin pie. You drop by, and say, you know what? I was thinking of you having a five by five bucks too. One for me and here. Here you go. Doesn't have to be a whole pie, right? You need to buy a little bit like it. Can be anything, any sort of commonality that you have with that person. A doggy treat for their dog. Maybe you notice your dog was a yappy mutt there when you're at the door and it's nipping at your heels, you know? At least that's something that you you connected with them. You said, oh, you know what? Your dog is a little nippy there. Maybe he's a treat. So I'm sending them out of the here's a doggy treat. Anything. Anything like that works. It's cheap, it's easy. And the client will remember it. Your thoughtfulness. This is what we have to do because there's, even though real estate agents are, are leaving the business a little bit, I wouldn't say it's in droves yet, but they're, they're getting out of the business. There's still a lot of them out there, and, and you're going to separate yourself from those folks who do nothing at all. Even if you're doing some of the stuff that's out here, if you're not following it religiously, right by letter to letter, line by line, if you're doing parts of it consistently and regularly, you're going to be more successful than those folks doing nothing at all that have been said business during the happy times for the last 10 years or so, because it's been a pretty big market. Anyone that bought a house in the last, I'm going to say 15 years or so, it's pretty darn good. Even 10, even five, right? Even some of that was five years ago. Right, because a lot of realtors that have automatic grips and you send an automatic email and that's it, they just leave that alone, and they're doing pretty good business with that. What I'm suggesting here today is you can do an even better business by being more systematic within your approach. You okay, Matt? Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. Well, yeah. I have a you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I, I, I find it interesting because I've been a buyer for the most part. Okay. Um, so those kind of automatic drips were exactly what I wanted. Okay. Uh, but there was some irony to it. Uh, and little things when you talk about things that went above and beyond, I think about your letters who bring in performance when I wasn't expecting. I didn't even know what a performer was. And okay. first time someone showed up with that. And then those were the kind of things that professionalism, and that knowledge that really set them apart. Mm -hmm. um, all the skills that you're talking about here, they um, it, they make you very likable and very uh, approachable and that sort of thing. And But the professionalism, like really knowing what you're talking about at the end of the day, um, for me as a buyer, would be the number one thing. Right, so knowing your, knowing your stats, knowing your numbers, right? Yeah. And we, yeah. We, we, you got to know that. It, it has been shocking how many people have worked with that, you know, really, if you said like put this house on that model, that we're, wouldn't really have an answer for it. You know, like what's this way? You know, when it, it's surprising. And so some of us are successful in spite of what we do, not because of what we do. You know, and this, and there is there's people that have been doing that for a long time. And, it, and I think we can we can do better. I think we can drill down deeper and we can once you find your niche that you want to work on, wherever it may be, you should know as much as you can about that. I mean, constantly, if you're the person who goes, I don't know, I don't know, I have to find out, you can do that once or twice and get away with it to someone that you establish a relationship with, but it's, you're going to go to someone that knows, right? Why would you just go to someone that, that has to find out or has to know something? Okay. 
I think we covered everything here, right? We know we have to call, we know we have to drop by, and we know we have to do emails and social media touches. Those are important. Those first things. You know, because again, we're separating ourselves from other folks in our field at all, or that are just doing maybe an email, maybe a quarterly email or something like that. But you my inbox, I'm not on top of it, it goes to over 100 pretty darn quick. Well, 100 emails to step through, and that gets tiring, right? So stay on top of it, and you, you can find, you know where a lot of your emails go if you're not. So right, so we know that if you're doing an open house or if you're doing any kind whatsoever of, of lead generation, door knocking, or if you're doing if you're doing phone calls, you can, you get a new med, right away get them on the by get them on there and get them get them rolling through that. Um, and if you have a plan where you, you take a new person that you get and you insert them on that, then they automatically get out of there, they're automatically gonna come up, right? Whatever, whatever CRM you're using, whatever uh, plan resource management tool you're using. You should have it flagged so that it's no next week that I got next week I got a call. Week three, I gotta give them a recipe. It's it automatically populates all the different different uh, databases, the database management tools. Um try and offer something of value, something that you connect with them, right? Like a prospectus or a sorry, what's the word to use? Perform perform thank you. Yeah, yeah, market analysis at home. Hey, you know, you know what? I'm never selling here. I don't care. Well, just for kicks and giggles, you want to know what your neighbor got or you want to know what your home is worth? Well, you know, give them a little quick CMA. How long does that take on, the, on, the, on Matrix? A quick CMA can do one of them in about five seconds, right? So that's something of value. And again, if you're listening to the folks you're talking to, whether it's commercial or whether it's residential, if you're listening to what those needs are, you're going to find something of value for them. You're going to find maybe, maybe it is a recipe, or maybe it is uh, something non real estate related, right? Maybe you notice your shingles are shot and said, You know what? Walking around the neighborhood, and I see a lot of your, a lot of your neighbors have done the roofs. You, you might if you think about needing to do one. I hear the list of the list of roofers that I've used in the past that I, that I think would help you out. Something like that, right? Something of value. Painters. And you see when you walk up to places, you see that you see door. I like door knocks. There's some funny door knocks out there. I gotta tell you, when you're door knocking, you see some. They're pretty creative. Like go away. I've seen that like a couple of times. Okay, I'm reading door in. Crazy stuff. I like the door knock. Um. So yeah, and schedule of mailings and calls. Whether you're using a Rolodex, last year. Whether you're using a Rolodex or whether you're using a, 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 a top producer, you want to schedule that and have that in your your. Your daytime, so it comes up and it prompts you. Otherwise, you know, if it's not in the schedule, it doesn't exist, right? Next slide, please, Joby. Does anyone need a stretch or a break? We're going to have about an hour or so. No? Okay. If you have to go, you're good to go. Um, All right, so we're talking about tips here, and we're talking about point number eight of the little cat is, is conclude every contact with a request for referrals, right? Now, if it just met, and you just met someone, and they're on your eight by eight, after you send them stuff, like you always say, I, I mean, Brian Bassini had a great one too, you know, he said uh, he said the referral is, is the highest sign of respect for you or something like that. If you had any friends or family that are moving, I would appreciate it. Kind of hard to ask for that first time out, but what have you got to lose? Really? Like if you meet someone in an open house and you because you know that people that are in that in that mindset that are in there looking for a house, they're gonna talk, talk they're gonna bump into someone else that's looking for a house too. And you just we just never know what their relationship is or what they're gonna say. So if you feel you're gonna be aggressive by asking someone saying, you know what, would you mind referring my name? I'm dead and I'm trying to I'm, I'm, I live here in this area. And I'm trying to grow my business, and the best way I do that is by referral. If real estate comes up in a conversation, would you do a card for me? What do you got to do? What do you got to lose? All I can say is no, right? All I can say, they, they, they might say worse. They might say yes, and then take it and throw it, like, kind of throw it on the front lawn when they're getting to their car. But it's our ego that stops us from asking that question. I don't want to be pushy. I don't want to be that pushy salesperson. I, you know, I'm not that guy. I'm pretty relaxed. I'm chill. You know. I'm starving, you know. So if you say, if you, say you don't care, here's a card. Take a card. Like, like I, I don't know. 
When I first started going up to restaurants when I got into business, my wife would say, Man, will you shut up? You're asking everyone, you're hungry, you're telling waitresses, you're telling, and I just, you don't want to be secret, right? You can't be. So you get into the habit real quick of asking for referrals and telling people, hey, look, I would love to help someone else that you know. Because maybe that person got hung up on or couldn't, maybe the realtor went away, they didn't leave a, they didn't leave a contact plan in place, and some people get mad, right? Some people get, get they get, they get upset, they're better or not. Yeah, we're looking for a really matter of fact, you know, and you're really to get old and pass away. So you just never know what you don't know until you ask. So ask for a referral when you're when you're touching those people at once. And again, if you're not comfortable doing it, then it's going to come across as uncomfortable and you likely won't be successful. But if you just throw sheets to the wind and go, I'm going to I ask everybody for this. It becomes normal. It goes right off your tongue and it's out there. You can't pull it back anyways. So you might as well say, you know what, what have I got to lose? And I do that door knocking too. I'll say, if someone said that, I'm going wrong. I'm, I'm, with, I'm being carried out of here in a fine box. It's like, well, do you have any neighbors you'd like to see move? Like, I'm going to knock on their door. And it just gets a smile, right? Or gets a laugh or gets that separation in there from everyone else. Why don't you leave and give someone else a chance to live in your house? You know, you've been here for 40 years. Come on, what do you get? You know, something goofy like that. Sometimes it works. And I've had some more clients too. Sometimes it doesn't work. Right? You just get on, on brush it off, and you just you know, walk down the street and you know, on the bed and knock on the next door. That's behind me. Uh, notes on each touch. If it's wintry out, and again, I, I was a door knocking guy too, and I still like to get out there and door knock. It keeps me slim. That's it. So if the only time I don't like doing is when it's pouring down rain. In the snow cold, I don't mind. Pencil still right. Pens sometimes freeze up, so go with a pencil. But if you talk to someone or you see someone, or maybe they were even having a bad day, make a little note of it. When you get back at the end of your at the end of your session of the agenda of door knocking, make a note of it. Send them a handwritten card or something. Hey, you know, touch your bad day there. You had a phone in one hand, a crying baby on one shoulder, and the dog was making a note at your heels at the same time. Must have caught you at a bad time, sorry to interrupt you. Thanks for answering the door. Dan, give them a handwritten note like that. People like to get handwritten notes. They do, you know, because most of the stuff they get in the mail has a window in it with a Dubai date on it, right? They get bills in the mail. So if they get a handwritten note from, from Dan or from April or from, you know, Allison, they're going to say, that sounds nice. And then they'll connect them with that connection, right? That's one. That's a good touch. But you won't remember to do it if you don't write down that note. Because after 50, after less than 50, after about 15 or 20 houses, you kind of go, well, what lady was that that said she was thinking about selling? <laughs> and you get there, and you can you probably even worse on the phone if you're on Mojo and you got three lines going at the same time and you're dialing. If, if any of you dial, if any of you cold call, you probably get, you know, you're, you're, you've got to be meticulous about note taking and follow up. Okay, next slide, please, Joby. There's 564 clients today, so we're doing good. We're doing good. Uh, okay, uh, guys, I don't know about you. This group may be a little small, but you can take five minutes and break up and come up with some other ideas for eight by eights. And I mean, if I say if you want to do things on that, we're okay. Then we're good. So, so we wanted to split the room right now. We wanted to do that for five minutes. Just go ahead. If you have to get a stretch, go ahead and stretch. Come up with, with a customized eight by eight for one person that you're going to get, one lead source, but one, one type of person, one type of person that are using that. Maybe it's going to be a preferred example or something that you want to connect with. Can you brainstorm that for me for about five minutes or so? There's a test at the end of this. So for you, got for you, Alex, I need and Tara, I don't know if Tara's still there. What I'm getting them to do is do a little bit of, of brainstorming around. Around, maybe maybe you and maybe you and Tara can do it together. Then can you can you talk or can you can you chat? Can you chat in the? Do we have that option? So what we're looking for is just some an eight by eight touch plan. So a customized eight by eight for one of the lead sources, one of the types of people we can come across. Are you able to chat or? Sorry, um, I think we can only chat with everybody. At least I haven't found a just direct link. Only the yet. Okay. 
I'm yeah. okay. Well, I, I suggested you and Tara because you guys are the only two that are here aside from me and and um, and the, and Joby. Are you okay, Tara? I'm seeing. Are, do you understand kind of what, what's going on? So, I guess would it would be dependent on the implication of the so maybe we'll pick like what kind of person the 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 uh, we're looking for any other information or anything that we talked about. Solid impression. Like it's just like a whole bunch of stories. It's a lot of context over a short period. And now it's just kind of those last week, maybe something personal or a But not necessarily. Doesn't have to be. You can tell a lot about everybody by the sort of going to Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Know, their kids play sports or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, there's a pairs of shoes or whatever there, you know what I mean? And, and like, like, all these people are busy. Yeah. 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 So, so you, you can, can say I like to always pick like one personal note, like whether it's, yeah. Oh, you're so good. Well, it's not the same line. And then you both have one that they don't feature conversations. So follow up. Nice to meet you, Tex. Oh, you mean that's what they do, right? But if you mean we are, like, it's yeah, 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 you know, she ended up because of my information she texted me about twenty minutes later half hour later apologizing she apologized Especially if you have a just if you've gotten something back or you can take out a different way, I guess it's different. But and a phone call gives you two two possible scenarios. Either they're going to answer or you're going to get voicemail. Right. And you leave a message. Right. Right. So if they if you get voicemail, which is probably a 90% chance that's what's going to happen. Yeah, it's hard. You leave a message. What kind of message would you leave? I would say for sure I leave a message, but. Um, yeah. um, 
just like that, you know, it's, it's so and so, and I'm uh, just following up, kind of like to say hi and see if there was any uh, questions. Yeah, probably not too long because like when somebody gets inspired, voice voicemail, I'm like, what are they going on about? Delete. I already got the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
Are you schizophrenic? Can you, you have three or four of you there? You want to just kind of brainstorm yourself or? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm just going through the pages and yeah, <laughs> running okay, through. Well, it. Well, <laughs> Did you get a copy of the uh, of it today? Yes, I did. I think it was Chloe who sent me um, the uh, the copy yesterday. Okay, yeah. I'm well taken care of. Appreciate it. Okay, we'll talk when we come back, but there's a few things we have to be careful of that are different in Canada from the States that are in the right. I'll talk okay. about that when we, when we do If I forget, because I'm old, just let me know that, uh, Dan, you said you were going to talk about some things we have to be careful of. Okay. Okay. So there is research that takes more than five minutes or five seconds. I taught the gifted class, so I feel like I need to step into that's like we should be trying to do like with every little thing that might not get there, but like the whole time we're trying to anywhere in that area, like with that calling it was like a higher committee and taking was really there to move that next step. Then you can move on to the yeah. 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 yeah.
dependent on no mercy of God or they don't have that all over it. Yeah, it's a triple threat. Yeah, it's a good idea. I think also, if I want to teach you some new topics, I'm teaching you math and language. Whenever you have to speak to you, so like you just kind of say, I guess, depending on that person that you get, you might be great to just have four days or something. So, like, we're doing those for the most part. So, obviously, we have to understand. Then I was talking to the touch like, like, yeah, sure, maybe it's too much. And it would be free. It's almost what we would be. Maybe. I don't know Python, but I was imagining. Oh, it's like a scale of Python. But like, they're everywhere. Like, your garage door. So it's kind of tricky. It's so cool to see this stuff. It's a bit of a small thing. It's like 64. You know what I mean? Like 16 pin or 8 pin or whatever it would be. I can see the team the. I like some of the things they have. I mean, they're good at this. We could run anything off them. So basically, we can do computers. Certain boards, like the refrigerator, man. I'm sure I just love hearing it. I love hearing that you're not talking about the Leafs game or the or whatever. You're actually thinking about it while he touches it. But we bring it back in and we'll discuss what we did and how that exercise was. Any comments from it or anything? Pick up any nuggets, anybody? Go ahead, Brian. I was just going to say, gonna say that uh, um, Mike brought up a good point as we were in discussion about our, you know, how. The eight by eights were working and and we were going through kind of like the, the examples that were set out for right. us in, in the week by weeks and mike said well isn't our end goal here to to make sure that we have all of their contact information so that they can we can move past the eight by eight and get them onto the 33 and it, i mean if you can do that by the, the second or third time that you you've touched them then why do you need to carry on with the eight by eight then you're moving you're moving forward okay so we, yeah. I thought, for me, that was enough. Yeah. yeah. What about anyone else? Does anyone else think that you can go right to the 33 before you get that egg in there? It's great. It's a great observation, right? I have mixed feelings. Because I feel like the purpose of the eight by eight is to really hammer it home and that like really um, immerse them in your systems and the touches over a short period of time, not to brainwash them or anything, but like so they don't forget about you. Okay. And if you skip too many steps and put them right into because the 33 touch is less frequency for touches. So depending on where somebody is in the buying or selling process, you wouldn't want to have too much of a gap before your next touch. So you have to gauge the client. It would yeah. be in it would be unique to each person, but if someone's really hot, even though if you get everything that you think you need. But then your next touch isn't for another two weeks, you could lose them. Yeah. Yeah. April, I see you kind of think of nope. something. No, you're yep. just, you're just yep. taking all in. It's a great yep. point, right? They're all great points. I heard a few things in it I really like. It's client specific, right? You can really count your eight as part of your 33, really catch it. Yeah. And again, you but you want to submit that, submit the normal relationship in that eight by eight. Eight by eight, you want it to be focused and you want it to be sincere and you want it to be regular so if it, and i think i mentioned it earlier that was a really hot client if you do the eight touches in a short period of time not to wait eight weeks but before you implement the 33 33 is almost more of an automatic but you are looking for details mike so you're right there you're mining for more information every conversation we have with someone we should be asking them something we should be learning something from them right unlike me in front here with the board chat different and listening we should really be listening to every client we have twice as much as we want, at least. So this eight by eight touch and the 33 touch is killed by overkill. It's 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 not brainwashing. <laughs> it's, it's really not, but it's but you want them to be top of mind. Top of mind. Yeah, so that's a better brainwashing, <laughs> top of mind. You know, no, I know what you meant. <laughs> I know what you meant to work with me or something. I'll be not in here to be out of those words. I'll be happy. 
deny it. It was it's recorded. Right. Yeah, we're not recording. So a couple of things I told Alex that we were gonna we were gonna um, I was gonna point out a couple of things that, that, that kind of varies from the way they do things in the states. One of them is on your eight by eight possibilities. It was approaching approaching expired, right? And we know that in Canada, in Ontario specifically, we're not supposed to approach expires, right? So, but if you're door knocking, if you happen to walk around, and in today's world, it, there's not a lot, but you'll see a, a sign that was up and the sign is gone. If you're innocent and you hit, you're hitting all the doors, you're going to hit the door, right? It's, it's, it's not like you're focusing on those expires because we're not allowed to. Are there realtors on our board that focus on expires? Heck yeah. yeah. There are, you know who they are. They're the ones that get the expired listings all the time. Now, that's their, their, their business plan is primarily focused on those expired listings. I just have to point out from a legal perspective that we're not allowed to do that in Ontario, right? We cannot focus on those fires. But heck, if, if, it's, if it's innocent enough and if, you, if you've got like a whole street that happens to be too expired, no, if, you know, do you want those clients? Maybe, maybe not, right? I mean, maybe they didn't sell because they wanted a million when it's only worth 800. So do you want one of your signs on there to be expired next? It's a, it's a personal decision, but if you come across it innocent, that's one thing. If you're focusing totally on expired listing, that's another thing all together. So be careful of that if you, when you're doing searches, because then we'll come up, you'll see sales, or you'll see relisted in history. Any other ahas from that exercise? That was a great one though. Great observation, right? Hi there, Dan. I uh, just said uh, something that I noticed too that I think you mentioned was that the eight by eight um, seems to be a lot more personalized and you can do, it's a lot more, I know a lot of these aren't like FaceTime, but you are like talking to them, like you're, you're engaging with them directly. Whereas I had a quick look at the 33, that's a lot more automated. So it's really, it's, it's a, the eight by eight is for them to remember who you are and what you do. And then the 33 for me, I think is just going to like, it just keeping you top of mind, not brainwashing. Thank, thanks for that, Alex. We're done here now, guys. We can pack everything out and finish. That's a, that, that's a great observation, but I have to take away five points from you for going ahead and looking at the 33 touch because that's stealing my thunder. But, but oh, okay. it really is, it really is um, important to understand that that eight by eight is, is to get to know them better and and to you know to understand what their wants and needs are at a better at a higher level right awesome anything else i wanted to talk about with that with the eight by eights there's i did kind of screen through it the previous couple of slides and you'll notice it in your book there's there's nine steps really and i talked a bit about it taking notes and things like that in gary's story you might want to review that when you read through it again just to kind of help you uh, help you understand the importance of the nine um hints and tips for, for following and getting this eight by eight going okay next slide please jo joey <laughs> the 33 touch there you go you didn't have to look too by getting that information that we got during the eight by eight step process with things like birthdays if you're if they're one of your past clients, you're going to have anniversary dates for when they bought their house. You're going to have um, maybe when they anything special going on with their kids. Does anyone think that there's a problem coming up with 33 ways to touch folks? What's the time period for this? The time period for this is is well, it's one year, right? For 33 touches and 33. I mean, you could touch them 12 times just by once a month. That would work, wouldn't it? Would 12 times would, would 12 times a year work? No, that's effective. Not as effectively. Only effectively. Go ahead, Alex. I was just saying pretty much the same thing, only about a third of uh, as effective. Okay. So so yeah, rule of thumb, if you, if it depends on your client, right? If you know your clients just bought a house and you want to touch them once a month instead of 33 times a year. So it's, it's, it's so 12 times a year. What are we risking when we do that? The longer we go between touches. With even our family and our best friends and our inner circles. 
Anybody? What are we risking? What's what could happen? We could be missing their purchases. <laughs> they could be meeting another realtor, right? Who's going to touch them more frequently than you are, right? Now, again, sister, like blood relatives, that's one thing, right? I try and never get between family. If someone says, Ben, my husband's a realtor, or my wife's a realtor, I'm going, you know what? I'm not getting in between them. But I also plant the seed. I say, well, just, just, just role play with me here for a second. And so, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I understand you want to use your husband, and I try not to get between that. But what happens if a deal goes south? You gotta live with that person for the rest of your life. You gotta, you're gonna have to eat supper with them, breakfast with them. Wouldn't it be awkward if they, you know, if there's a falling out and you think, you know, you don't get along after the after they didn't sell your house? Me, you don't care. You're gonna fire me if it doesn't work. Just toss that out there, <laughs> right? Just send them that out there to see if it works. So overkill. And again, I, I lead to the fact earlier, 33 might not be enough, guys. There's so many other people out there. You know, Facebook ads, if, if you're on Facebook, if you're old like me, you're seeing ads, more and more ads creep in. And people pay for ads to get in because they want to get into that mind. They want to get into that seller or buyer's head. And if you're not touching them 33 times a year, 50 times a year, there's a chance someone else will get in. And we don't want that. We want to be, we want to be their friend. Right? Again, maybe not between husband and wife. But hey, Dan. Really yes. I just had a quick question. Is there a uh, quantity versus quality piece here? As far as the TikTok stuff goes, you know, you think of that as, you know, pretty easy, but uh, for people to do, but it, I, yes, you're going to, have to do it a lot, but is that going to be more effective than someone who is taking the time to do a proper 33 touch? It's a great question. I'm going to throw that right up in the group. Do you think that it's better to do a fewer amount of, of deeper touches or a shotgun approach and just touch as many people as you can. What do you guys think? I think it's a little bit like what Allison said. It depends a little bit on the situation. Okay. But um, I don't know. Like, I, I, I gotta tell you, they're probably both pretty effective. Like, just having regular, even if it's kind of superficial stuff. So it keeps you thinking about that person. Anyone else? I would, I would uh, do a hybrid like if I have a TikTok and I would send a link, you know, after one week, something or this my TikTok video, talk about this, and that email or text message. Okay, that's fair. I like I like quality over quantity. I'd rather okay. you know take people up for dinner, go to their home, or have them in my house and get to know them than contact. Yeah. Okay. Hundreds of people on an email. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I think having some like certainly quality over quantity as a whole, I think is a good idea. Having a hybrid of, of both, I think there's definitely a system that they created with the 33 touch or are expanding that to 50 touch. But I think you'll get definitely a better response with the things like the Popeyes in a, in a phone call, going out for coffee, um, little things like that versus sending them, you know, a, a lot of mass, clearly mass generated yeah. emails, um, automated texts, like things that you can very too much AI stuff. Right. Good. So I'm hearing, I'm hearing a little bit of both. It kind of depends. Alex is kind of like door knocking. I used to be involved in business with a partner and we door knock and he was that guy that drilled down and if he met someone at the door, he'd spend half an hour, 45 minutes talking with him. That was him. That was the way he did it. He didn't, he didn't just leave it. He tried to form that bond right away. I'm more of a just, hey, I'm door knocking and if someone asked me in, I said, no, I said, I promised my buyer I'd be looking at X number of houses. And if I go in and look at yours right now, I won't be able to hit my goals for today. But what I will do is this. I can come back at 4 o'clock when I'm done door knocking. But between 4 and 5 today, worker is, is, is 2 p.m. tomorrow afternoon better. And, and then that way there, you're not going down a bunny hole. And you're not, you're not getting sidetracked. You're still able to develop that conversation and develop that relationship better. But you're not taking away from what you're primary focus is today which is shotgun i want i've got a thousand i got a i got 500 door knockers to get out today and i know if i don't get them out today i gotta do more tomorrow 
because that's the mindset that we're getting into, right? It's that three hours, it's that whatever you choose, whatever number you pick, I got to hit them. If I get distracted from what I'm doing right now, I have to replace that somewhere else. If that's what we say, if you erase, you replace. So if you're, if you're that person that wants to do that deeper relationship, great. But where are you going to add the time in to get more people? Because it's a numbers game, right? We know we're not going to we're not going to connect with everybody. So we need to we need to talk to a lot of folks, and 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 keep growing that that monster database. Good. Did I answer your question, Alex? Yes, I believe you did. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Next slide, please, Jody. I can't read that one. So this is the sample. This will be on page 29 in your manuals. And this will be a sample test drive of what 33 touches look like. And again, we can we spend some time brainstorming that. Let me see if I'm right here. Yeah, when you first throw a number of 33 out there or 50 out there or 60 or 100 if you're, you know, really good. I mean, it sounds daunting, doesn't it? But when you start picking off holidays and you start picking off anniversaries, birthdays, if you know they're, you know, when they got married and they still like each other, you can kind of that's an anniversary. You know, these are all touches. They add up pretty fast, right? Hey, and if they don't like each other anymore, that's two contacts, right? Is that, is that married couples put into two? So you get Mr. and Mrs. or you get Mr. and Mrs. or you get Mrs. and Mrs. in the big world. So it's, it's a good thing. I mean, divorce, you'd like to say you're bad, but then you get three deals. You're going to get a sale, you're going to get two purchases if you do it right. So think of it that way. Think of it that way. If you're going to go after a married couple, I mean, maybe you want to throw a monkey wrench in there and see if you can't get them fighting with each other. You know, you're, you know, I mean, it gets it going, doesn't it? Hey. All I'm saying is that some sometimes a single is formed in an argument between a husband and wife, or a husband and husband, or a wife and wife, and they decide that it's not working anymore. We've got to lose the house. Let's call Dan. It's his fault, anyways. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, right? To get to throw it around. Then you can add that day into your touches, too, right? That becomes another touch. This is the day you got the work on. This is your, you know, happy. Some people are happier when they're when released from each other. Okay, okay, I'm going to stop there now. And they have done enough. Um, but you get the idea. You get the idea. There's billions of reasons out there to, to touch someone. To, to just, like, the holidays not withstanding. I mean, every time you turn around, your back school stuff is out already in schools. Isn't that amazing? Hey, we start, start, are we happy through summer yet? No. But the Walmart is pushing heads around. You know, so the back of school kid is another great day. It's happy to stay here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. Not for teachers. Okay. Next. <laughs> okay. Okay. next slide, please. Okay, so you need a plan as to how you're going to implement your 33 touches. Yeah. You need to you need to map it out because if you go like you go from eight by eight to go to your 33, if you don't have it written down and plan down, you might do eight by eight. You might build something really good, and it's something will come up. Well, the phone will ring from someone else. Say, Dad, can you come to us to my house? And it's like, sure, squirrel. And off I go. I go to the house, and what we're doing again? So you want to strategize and you want to articulate. How you're going to implement that 33 touch, right? How much of a day am I going to spend on that 33 touch? And that might be dependent on the size of your database, right? If you have a if you have a, a ginormous database and you got to break it down, maybe I can spend maybe I have to spend two hours a day just doing my touches. Now does that count as your three hours of lead gen? What do you think? Yeah. What do you think? You got three hours to lead gen, and I'm supposed to be out there, I'm supposed to be generating business, and I'm supposed to be if I'm, if I'm working on my touches. Is that considered part of my three hour day? Say yes right away, April. Well, we yeah. can't start training. Uh, well, well, not training. Okay. I would say that's follow up. You're going to say it's follow up? So, yeah. what's in the follow up? Well, because you've already, you've already got the contact. Okay. okay. So, you're not generating, yeah, yeah, you're making, you're making your maintenance. It's maintenance. Good thought. Anyone else? So if you're if you're if you're if you're blocking time off, I mean we're really so we work in any day that is going to lie anyways. 
and we were about 23 to 24 hours a day. He's the normal you know, responsibility time frame. So if you're blocking three for lead gen or getting new business, then you're going to add two in, depending on the size of your database, to make sure that you touch everyone the appropriate amount of times. Right? So I think I would have to be over in that camp and I have to say, yeah, I think maybe it's going to be, it's going to be um, more in the maintenance, maintenance of these. But the good news is, what's in the follow-up? The fortune is in the follow-up. So that's where your money is made, guys. Your money's not made meeting someone for the first time, getting their information, and putting it into the database in an eight by eight. Your fortune is made in following up with them, finding out about their kids' birthday and the kids' operation that they're having, maybe doing a GoFundMe campaign for someone, someone that's close. Maybe your business maybe is, maybe is driving some clients, some friends that you have to someone's business that you just met, right? That's where the fortune is. Okay, next slide, please. We say three calls here to everybody, three handwritten notes after each phone call. For eight by eight, the handwritten notes are great because that's a point of follow up, right? You can then call someone and say, Hey, did you get my note? If they didn't get it. You can confirm their address. You can blame Canada Post, which is what most people do, right? Uh, be a giver. Brian started out early on by saying he's doing food donations when he door knocks. That's giving people, you're giving them something, you're giving them an opportunity to help out to pay it forward, even if it's a can of soup or a can of beans, right? You're giving someone something. So then when you ask for something in return, hey, you know what you want to stick in the cell? You know, you're not, it's reciprocal. It's not, it's not just a cold ask, it's it's coming from a from a place of giving, which is what we want to do. So give, follow, give more, give, follow, give. That's good, that's good, Joby. Now we can go. Personal, again, we want to anchor ourselves in that wherever we're doing, whether, whether it's a phone, sometimes it's a voice, right? Someone hears it, if you're calling people, you'll call them regularly. Um, if you're talking to people or seeing them, they'll see you coming. You know, if the shutters go down and the door gets locked and the lights get turned off when you're coming up, maybe they don't want to talk to you that day, right? Maybe that might be a sign. I'll go ahead and knock anyway, but they're going to say, right? Um, Popeyes, Popeyes, the folks who call, you call before you pop by, make sure they're at home, or you're just kind of surprised. It's surprising? Yeah. Either way works right, no right answer. It's incorporating it into your strategy and doing it and then implementing it. That's the only thing you have to worry about. If it's if you'll learn over time what's working and what's not, focus more of your time on what works and let the things that weren't working kind of fall off. When do you give up on something? You know? I mean, I tell folks when they're door knocking, there's two reasons to stop door knocking. One when you read any the obituary, right, Brian? And one when the when police calls and says, you've got to cease and desist order. Stop. Stop. Other than that, keep going. And hey, you know what? You might not hear back from Kate Peterson is a bolt coach or a match coach. She, bolt coach. She, she was coaching. She said seven years. Seven years she was giving people drips and failing them stuff and giving them stuff. Nothing. Not a peep out of them. She just kept going, kept giving them stuff. Then she did three deals in six months with that people. She said, hey, I gotta ask you, why didn't you deal with me? Why didn't you, you know, why didn't ever? She said, well, they didn't need you. So we don't know who's listening to our message and who's not. We don't know who's getting those cards. Maybe you're gonna make someone's day by sending them a handwritten card. You know, their, their whole week, month, year may have gone right off the rails. And they get a handwritten card and they really say, hey, how are you doing? Just thinking of you. Maybe that just makes a difference for that person. We just don't know, right? Okay, next, uh, please, Joby, next slide. Yeah, we want to try and do different, and the more you know your people, the more you're going to make it that way. It's touch. The more you're going to, the more you're going to get better and better. Okay, next again, please. So, Alex, you talked about it's part of automated. The thirty-three touches is automated. If we don't have to think about it and do it. That saves us time, right? To do what? To go out and knock on more doors or call more people or, or, or just get more business. So so automation is not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, happy birthdays. I, and I know Kirby, I speak to Kirby Chan again. I know his Facebook page is not always Kirby you're talking to, right? I mean, there's there's the AI now is, is like, what is it, GPI AI or G, G, what is it? G, GPT. Yeah, yeah. So that's the, that's the next way that's coming. I mean, if it's not already here. Folks don't know if it's either talking to or not. I mean, you get you get so many stuff, and 
again, though, there may be a tipping point there where people will start to resist that and start not using the game anymore. I don't know, but if you don't even know when it's there, when it's not there, you know, you could be in trouble. Tip, keep it simple, salesperson. Touch not bedazzled. So you don't have to, you don't have to be deep in your pocket and give them something expensive every time, right? Give them something of value, piece of information. Have in the back, hey, I saw you have, congratulations, you're a grandma, you know, or grandpa or whatever. Okay, next slide, please. All right, well, we'll think about this for a second because this is a pretty, pretty key point. I talked about Bruce Fardy earlier on, and he bought a car. He, he, he came from Australia to Seattle, didn't know many people, kept in contact with people. Bruce kept in contact with his car salesperson, but his car salesperson didn't keep back in touch with him. So, what do you think happened? Those of you that haven't read the story already in the, in the book. Anyone have any guesses? Did Bruce drop the car salesman? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Bruce did not buy, Bruce bought four cars in the time he was corresponding with his car sales person, but not from him, not from the same guy. He bought these different car sales people. But when the guy came time to buy a house, who do you think he used? The salesperson used Bruce to sell his house. Even though Bruce didn't use him to buy cars in that, because the salesperson wasn't staying in touch with Bruce. It was the other way around. So don't expect your clients to be calling you up, asking you how you're doing, and being all warm and fuzzy like that. It doesn't work that way. We have to contact them, and we have to reach out to them, right? Okay, next slide, please. It's a good, it's a, it's a story because even if other salespeople don't, they're not in the game. I mean, were we salespeople when we bought or sold our house, you know? Did, who did you use? Did, you, did they stay in touch with you? Did they say thank you very much? Did you get a Christmas gift or a call or a closing gift, maybe? Did you get an anniversary gift? Did they touch you and ask you how you're doing? Maybe we just went through COVID. Are you still alive? If you're not doing that and touching your clients, somebody else might be. Okay, and then your cost, right? It's, we spoke about numbers and knowing stats, knowing your businesses, knowing your numbers that you want to hit to hit your goals. Because quite frankly, folks, every year in the business plan, if you say, I want to make 150000 and you put the 150000 number down there, and every year when it comes to July, and you haven't made seventy five, you're not on track, all right. You're keep, you got to keep score. So so do we know our numbers? Do we know Do we know how much we have to spend on marketing? How much, how can I treat my special clients? If I've got four advocates that are sending me deals, say two deals a year even. Well, two deals a year in today's market is how much? What's the average sale price in Barry residential? Anybody? Seven seventy-five. Okay, pretty darn good. Pretty darn close. So the average commission, taking even if you wiggle off your two and a half points, seven seventy-five. So you can save a point and a half on that. Do that seventy-five hundred plus half of that again, about ten grand. It's like ballpark again, right? That buys a lot of little pens and little magnets, spring magnets or something. If they're going to send you two of those deals a year, <laughs> take care of them or take them out to lunch or take them out to supper or dinner or invite them over to your house for some kind of cheese and Twinkies or something. I don't know. Whatever, whatever, like an like engagement, right? It deserves your time and your thought. That's how that's how realtors hang around in this business for a long time because they spend time thinking about this. And some don't, some just do it by the seat of their pants. And then boost their hair when they have a 10 year or 12 year bull market. Right? I'm not projecting the next 10 or 12 years is going to be a bull market, but I think it, I think it is. Housing starts a lot, right? Coast to coast in Canada, record housing starts. I think we're in pretty good business, guys. I think we're in a pretty good spot. We're going to grow. Our population went up a million last year. It's going to go up with more than a million in 2023. They got to go somewhere. They got to link somewhere. Might as well be Canada works with themselves in the place, right? They're they being forced into 400, you see, and they're even making more lanes than making more companies to get them up here quicker. Isn't that nice for them? The ministry, the ministry of transportation is doing that for us because he's helping ferry out. Even the coal train goes by. Coal trains, yeah. yeah. Well, you see the subway line now going bench too, right? Going going east. It's going to have a new ground. We can't go south. There's a big lake there. Until someone pulls a plug on that and creates more land, they're going to come over. And the northwest, right? 
I mean, Old Sound, I'm sure, I'm sure, probably with Wasabi Beach, they're all feeling the effects of it. Heck, Midland, I know that's in the last five years. Midland's not like that, I guess. Uh, okay. Next slide, please, Joby. All right. Um, let's look here real quickly. We'll just see what this exercise is. I'm not saying we're going to run it or not. I know, David, you had a question early on that you wanted to speak to. Early on, when we first started today, we were saying a difference. And, uh, I'll go back and I'll speak to that before we wrap up today. Uh, what the heck is on page 35? A good, a good facilitator would know that, by the way. I just want you to know that. I would automatically know, but uh, you got me. I know we're getting near the end, too. If you're getting hangry because it's lunchtime, that's all good. Okay, we talked about earlier your Mets and what you needed to know. So on page 35, you'll see you've got your names divided by 12 times two is the number of possible closed sales that exist in that data bank, that database, right? So if you're working your numbers, then your cost, how much does it cost? Cost per. You'll find out that working your database is about 50, 50 cents of the touch. Off the top of my head. I didn't just get that number out of anywhere. If you do the calculations, you should find out that your average touch is on a person costs you about 50 cents a touch, 750 cents a touch. Right? Does everyone see that there on page 35 for your max? And here, and now here's here's for the people that are really math inclined. I don't know how many there are. I kind of want to do this in my bank account. I like I like to look at numbers then and make sure it's going the right direction. That's just me though. But what they're saying here is that for every 12 people in your database marketed to a 33 touch, 32 times a year, 33 touches equal to two sales. Then one sale is a referral, one's a repeat business. So someone's going to someone in your in that database is going to know something and and. Do something, and then, and then another one is going to refer something. Three hundred and ninety-six touches. That is, which is twelve times thirty-three is equal to two sales. So, three hundred and ninety-six touches times fifty percent, which is your average cost of a touch, is one hundred and ninety-eight dollars for two sales. You divide one hundred and ninety-eight by two, you get ninety-nine. I know it's like that. Um, it's, it's freaking magic, right? But don't worry about it. It's it's it's, it's going to be independent to everyone's own numbers. Let's just say it's cheaper to touch people than you think, especially with some of the ways we talked about last time I checked. We could unlimited dial. We could talk. We could phone for nothing, right? Locally, pretty near nothing. Okay. Um, let's go to the next slide, please, Joby. Uh -huh. Yeah, so if you scroll down to the next page, you'll see what happens if you're not touching those phones. And you drive by and you see a competitor sign on one of your contacts and houses or businesses, right? It, it ha it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Someone's gonna fall through the cracks sometime in your real estate career. It's it's not a fun place to be, guys. It's not it's not a great spot to be. But hey, you, you learn from it, right? You, you move on, as Jerry would say, on to the next, onward. Onward, on to the next thing. I mean, sometimes you don't connect with someone really well. Sometimes you'll buy with someone. I, I work with military folks, and it happens because I fall out of touch with them, and someone else gets in, and the next thing you know, they're transferred and posted out, and I wasn't there. So don't beat myself up over it. Does it hurt? Yeah, buddy, it hurts. And you can go down a slippery slope there and start to second guess yourself and wonder about what's going on. It's just like, just pull your hands up and go back out there again and, and, and get back on the horse. Okay, next slide, please, Joby. It costs you a lot anyways by not keeping in touch with your database. It can cost, if it happens twice or three times, you know, that's, that's, that's a significant mission in today's world. Okay, we talked about different options for the 33 touch, whatever works, but implement it. Have that plan, strategize it, and say what, when you're going to implement it by. Next slide, please. Okay, we won't do this now. 
Although Nate might have worked so well, I just feel that I feel like you know, the 33 will be the same type of thing, right? You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna map out or plan out your 33 touch, right? And even if your database has only five people, guess what? It's easier and quicker, right? So you gonna say something like No. Okay. So I talked about steering it in your database or, or making sure that you're focusing on the right people. When you have a huge database or a big farm, it becomes more difficult to drill down and, and, and know who's, who's going to sell tomorrow and who's not. But that's our job, guys, to know who's, urgent, who's got urgency, who's, 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 who's ready to move now. Well, aside from the, you know, eavesdropping in on those breakfast conversations between husband and wife, we don't know. Fact is, we don't know who's going to be having a baby, who's going to be downsizing, who's going to be getting ready for the old folks' home. You got to be comfortable. You got to know your database. You got to know who's in there, and then you grade them and touch them accordingly. If someone, maybe you know someone's older and they're and they're health, they have health issues. Maybe they can't manage the stairs anymore. You're going to be touching them more frequently, right? You're going to be touching them with more pertinent information. You have to know that, though. You have to be in regular contact with those folks. To know what those things are. And that's my point, I guess. Regardless of the size of your database, it should be manageable so that you are able to connect with those folks, learn from them, and give to them. Give to them what we know, either our knowledge or time, some piece of what we have. And your core advocates, if there's, if there's business relationships, or if you've got attorneys that you work with, and you know what? I find it a lot easier to pick up the phone and call an attorney if I need something, if I've asked them how they're doing without like calling them without needing something. You know what I mean? If we call if you go to the well all the time and you keep asking for something, then eventually they're gonna stop taking your calls. Because the tail of that ever does is ask me for something or need someone bailed out or has a question about this. But if you call them up and offer them something, you give them something, just ask them how they're doing, you're much more likely to to build a better relationship with them. It's the same for your clients and your that want to sell your house. You're always calling asking for a referral, always calling and asking them if they're going to sell. They're going to stop answering your calls, so you better get to know them. Next slide, please. Yep, yeah, it's a referral. There's BNI group that we know about them, business networking international. There's groups that form in different locations. I think Gary has three chapters. And they, and but there's an expectation there. You're going to bring you're going to bring some business to other people. They're going to bring some to you, and you're going to bring some to them. You can't. They, they, they. It doesn't work like that. Next slide, please. Okay, it, it'll give you some more tools that it, that's in the uh, that's in the book and in your study manual. But you got to follow up, right? Like this is very interesting, and then you can think about it. But if you don't take the next step with the documentation, then we're not probably not doing it as good as we could do, or as well as we could do. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, it's telling you how to how to set up and how many times you should be working with those people, right? Allied resources, your core advocates. We talked about them right off the start, right? Okay, next slide, please. Yeah, there's some good points there. Don't you can't trust people's commitment, right? And they need to, regardless of how good the experience was, what they bought or sold with you, it will stay over time. Sixteen days, as a matter of fact, this time it takes about sixteen days for for you for that good feeling and that warm fuzziness to kind of cool a bit if you're not in constant contact with them. Okay, thank you, Joby. Next slide. Here's a question for you to sit down and write an answer down. I don't have to know the answer. How many how many advocates have you met with? How many clients have you met with? How many people have you talked to about their business or in the last let's say month? Try the last week or the last 48 hours. Okay. Oh, we left here. We all you know. So then the next part of that question is who do you plan to meet? Who can you schedule an appointment with? Who haven't you talked to in the last little bit that maybe you should be? Maybe whether it's a client or whether it's a, whether it's a vendor or someone, someone, anyone. Okay, next slide, please. It 
Same thing, Toby, please. Next one, they're talking about the importance of, of being in touch and, being, and following up. Yeah, next slide, please. Okay. So this is the question that David asked on early on about how many people can in their database to create a, a business we're having. And really, as few as 200 people, 216 people, Divide that by six, you 36 deals a year, right? Now, most of us, now most people know between 100, 200, sometimes up to 300 different people. So this year, the easy example is saying, let's say, let's say that the person you got is only knows six other people. Well, those are the numbers that spit out of giving six other people who are doing 216 deals a year, which is, which is sounds ridiculous. I mean, I can do 216 deals a year, I can put a I can put a decimal point somewhere in there and if you live off that. Right? I mean again with our average price of home and the average commission rate, you need to slipping a bit. It's just it gives you a moment to pause and think and kind of the scope of the numbers, right? Because it's a numbers game and keeps falling back to that. It's all about the numbers. Okay, next slide, please, Joey. So success through others doesn't mean on top of others. It doesn't mean that we steamroll other people. It just means that we work together with other people to kind of help them out and then they help us out, right? Educate, ask, and reward. So when you're asking for referrals, and I mentioned back when you're talking, when you're touching with your dad, he's always asking for a referral. Always asking if they know anyone else that you can help. Because it's about helping other people. It's not about, it's not about taking or making. That stuff will come. I think it's more the mindset where we're helping other folks in that, where we're, we're pushing that forward, we're paying forward, then the other stuff, the money, the fancy clothes and power will come. Okay. Next slide, please. Yep, again, that's what I've just been saying. Next slide. You have to have a value, you have to know their own value, right? Okay, next slide, please. Yeah, next slide. Okay, next, please. Yes, yeah, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, no, I understand. Great. I appreciate it. No worries. Right. Thanks for coming. You too. Okay, rewarding the right behavior. When we talk about referrals, a lot of people say, well, I'll, you know what? If someone refers someone to me, I'll, I'll, I'll do a deal and then I'll thank the referee, right? Referral me. It's not a referee. They don't work strikes. Anyways, you don't want to you don't want to reward them. You don't want to wait to get a deal done or a contract closed. You want to reward the fact that they thought of you and refer someone. That's where you want to give them a gift card. That's when you want to call them. Too. Like, oh, give them a big hug on a drop by something that they'll like, right? So so reward the behavior, not the results. This is something that we should be doing. Because we, because that's what we need. Because because we're not going to connect with anyone. It's, it's a numbers game again. Okay, next um, next slide, please. Yeah, it's all the same. I think we're kind of ready for kind of wrap things up and kind of bow on it. I mean, you, you guys can very good. Thank you for sitting here for two hours. Uh, next slide, please, Joby. There's about eight left, but um, yeah, it's all going over what we talked about and how to implement it and where we go from here. Next slide, please. Final thoughts, yeah, that's where we're at. All right, again, if you have to do business in a world like this, don't you rather work with people that you like and know and trust already? So you're working with your mess. By doing that, you don't have to go out and continue to generate new business. We are open, because what I said earlier, folks get old and they die and they pass away, they move, right? It's pretty hard, like, like if everyone's moving for a better than Newfoundland, it's pretty hard to work with someone with a really close person in the Newfoundland, so if you're not, Generating more people and building your database, you're going to find start to shrink, and then you'll have less and less and less people to work with. So the point is, get a database, feed it daily, talk to it, communicate with it, and build your business from where you want to be. If you're happy at five deals a year, then you're happy at five deals a year. Do some math, figure out how many deals you need to have, how many contacts in your database, and away you go. Um, yeah, the eight by eight and 32 touches are two ways to, to really, really touch everyone and, and, and be sure. Don't worry about the feedback, guys. I don't need any, any, um, you know, I don't.
I don't care that it has to pay. I don't put a bonus on my paycheck if they fail the evaluation. So that's fine. Does anyone have any thoughts as we go? Any outcomes, any thoughts on today, how it went? Any nuggets? Welcome. You're awesome. Is good, but all the things are different in the system, like you know, three, five, eight, and yes. Okay, three, five, yes. Okay. Friday, comments or thoughts? Oh, perfect logic. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Gary has something on the cover of a book. He says success is simple, it's not easy. Right? Anyone can do it, not everyone will. So make what you want to go. What do you define as success in your own life? If you if you don't want you may be a you may be that five hundred year person year year person. But if that's what you want to do, then you can you can take steps and get there. Right? Thanks guys for coming. Joe, thank you very much. Alex, thank you. Do you have anything you want to share? Any last minute uh has? Putting me on the spot. Um no, I uh, just really enjoyed it. You're wonderful as usual. We really appreciate you guys taking the time. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks for parachuting in. Thanks for parachuting today. I appreciate it. Take care, guys. <laughs> Bye now. Bye, Joby.